that was insane. Sorry. We, uh, uh, I actually doing this from uh, David Sachs's Twitter account uh, because uh, it looks like doing it from mine basically <laughs> broke the Twitter system. And Musk has known Kraft Ventures general partner and co-founder David Sachs for many years. Sachs was also one of the investors who provided funding for Musk's purchase of Twitter. He has also contributed to the DeSantis campaign. He joins us now. David, thanks very much for your time. Maybe you can uh, walk us through how this Twitter event came together in the first place. Yeah, it's a good a good question. I think that the DeSantis campaign was interested in doing something a little different, and they connected with Elon and Twitter, and we organized this uh, Twitter space uh, to do the uh, announcement. And I think after some initial technical glitches, it went off perfectly. I mean, if your viewers uh, go to Twitter now and go listen to the recording, I think they're gonna wonder what all the fuss was about. Because again, once we got started, in a room uh, on my account, uh, we it, it worked out perfectly. The audio was crisp, and the governor was really articulate and uh, very substantive in his addressing policy. I mean, did that did that uh, inspire you to possibly even think about doing more of these events, especially as we're going to be uh, you know rolling into a lot more coverage tied to the presidential campaign? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, Elon said that at the end that this was not uh, just a, a unique event, that any major presidential candidate who wanted to come on the system and do a Twitter space uh, were open to doing that. So, yeah, I think very much that Twitter wants to be an open platform or town hall for candidates to use. And I think the idea is that when you're in a Twitter space, uh, it's not just like a broadcast medium where you've got one person broadcasting out to many. You've got, it's many to many. You've got all of these users there in a room together. Anyone can be called on. Anyone in theory can ask a question. It's a different kind of functionality. It feels much more intimate and authentic than what you would normally get through traditional media or through some sort of traditional uh, appearance by a politician. And I think that came through in the room. I think you get, it really has a very different feeling than what uh, candidates have done in the past. And yes, Elon has said, anybody can do it. It definitely seems like it was more intimate. I mean, if he had done this on network, he would have gotten millions of viewers, right? And you had, what, four, 500,000 people tuned in to the Twitter space? Synchronously, uh, but then in addition to that, the the recording instantly went viral on Twitter, and I think as of last night, we're up to six and a half million views in just one of the uh, Twitter spaces. So there was another uh, Twitter space and multiple Twitter spaces that were forking off the one that was on my account, and people were listening to to my Twitter space, and then they were also having commentary in their own Twitter space, and they were having their own guests, and they were essentially there was so it, it was you could have many. Uh, appearances. You can kind of choose your own commentators. So people were doing really interesting things with the functionality that we've never seen before. And like I said now, the recording is into the many, many millions and uh, bigger than I think anything you could get through traditional media. I wonder, you know, to me, um, David, one of the most interesting things about Twitter when it started was that you had so many diverse viewpoints coming together. Um, you know, people disagreeing on things sometimes in a friendly way, sometimes not, but nonetheless, it was, it was out there. Um, this seems to be, uh, seemed to have been a launch that was tailored for the candidate. You didn't have anybody who wasn't backing him asking questions. There was no critical discussion. Um, isn't that missing from this kind of thing? No, I mean, we, we tried to ask him some fastballs. I mean, I, I asked him, has the fight with Disney gone on too long? What about this NAACP travel advisory for the state? What about the the, the book bans, uh, so-called? And we gave him the chance to answer all those questions. So we, we pitched him uh, what you would say were, were tough questions. Um, now, the reality is we only had an hour, and you can't just open the thing up. This is a, a live presidential announcement, and we can't open it up to the entire world, both for time purposes and because, realistically, there's going to be some hecklers. So there had to be some control exercised over this, but we were able to pull in a bunch of people to ask questions. And I think, you know, we've invited the candidate back to do another town hall, and we're going to keep experimenting with this format and pulling in more and more uh more and more questions and more and more people to participate into this type of format. One of the main issues of this election has got to be the right to choose. Um, you know, women's health care and abortion. This is something that uh, on which Ron DeSantis seems, frankly, out of step with the majority of the American people. And it was a question that he wasn't asked. Um, how do you think that's going to play out in this election, David? 
I think it's an important issue and he's gonna have to speak to that. We couldn't cover every single issue in this town hall. We covered so many issues and it still, feel, still felt like we were scratching the surface of all the things we could talk about. There's other people complaining about the fact that we didn't discuss the economy enough. So we discussed a lot of different things. You know, we also wanted to give the candidate a chance to present his vision at the top of the Twitter space just because he deserves a chance to tell us what his candidacy is about. So you're right, we didn't get to that issue. It's an important issue. I think there'll be other opportunities for the candidate to address that. Now, one of the other things, David, the, the fact that this is no longer a public company but still very much talked about is it's hard to know what's happening with the business day to day. I wonder if you got any feedback, for example, from advertisers on this format and how that might factor into you know, how these things get tailored in the future. I didn't have that that conversation, but uh, you know what I can tell you is that the number of eyeballs that were on this thing and are still on it today are just unprecedented. I mean, this is the worldwide conversation right now, and you know it's really quite extraordinary that because we started 15 minutes late because we had so much interest in this room this somehow has become the worldwide story and the traditional media is trying to portray this as some kind of disaster uh look a horse and buggy people didn't like the car either uh the traditional media is is i think uh hysterical about this because they don't like the idea that they're being replaced and disintermediated and there's another way for candidates to speak directly to the people so they really don't like that and they're trying to make this out to be something that it wasn't like i said once we got started, the audio was really perfect. And again, I would just urge all of your viewers to go listen to it. Uh, it's going viral on Twitter right now. I don't think we've ever seen anything like this before. So I guess I guess that backdrop for those who have sort of suggested that the Twitter audience has been getting smaller. What can you tell us right now about the user base, how active it is beyond just this particular event? Definitely not getting smaller. I mean, based on everything I understand, the, the user base is getting bigger and the attention and the number of minutes is getting bigger. And I'd also say that the cultural influence of Twitter is getting bigger. I mean, this is what everybody is talking about today, including us. So Twitter is only more important and more relevant, I think, today than ever before. And a big part of the reason is because if you look at the platform, Elon has actually launched launched a lot of functionality since he took over. The pace of development on the platform has actually increased, and he's opened it up to be more of a free speech platform. They're not putting their thumb on the scale of the debate the way they were before, and therefore the debate is more vigorous and is more interesting. So I think Twitter is only more important and more relevant than, than ever before.